Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for watching the studio channel. Uh, this is a bit of a behind the scenes. I know you're super nerds and you want to understand uh, all the ins and outs, the step-by-step -step process and the learning and things like that. Uh, so I'll put most of it on the studio channel. If you haven't seen this video, uh, I'll put a link above that basically we're gonna clean this up and give it away to uh, a deserving person that can hopefully do uh, the rest of the work. But onto the nerdy part, this part here of the, of the car is totally trashed. You can see over here, it is um, rusted out and disgusting. So uh, it just needs to be replaced. So I'm doing a few tests. Now what I did over here, uh, was I used 1500 grit, then 3000. Is that correct? Not really, um, but I did it anyways and it actually worked, so it's not that big of a deal. The more exciting part is I took out 3000 grit with my polishing fluid, which you're the first to sort of hear this. Uh, I've been working on a, a new polishing fluid that can kind of, is a happy medium, I would say, between using a heavy polish and a light polish, and it leaves behind a beautiful finish, but it can still cut well. So that's the challenge. I'm kind of asking it to do a lot. We've been in development of it for, nine plus months or so. And so I'll show you what it can do on a wool pad and then you can use the same exact thing. The idea is to have two pads and one polish. That's kind of uh, what we've been working on for quite some time and hopefully it will come out soon once I pass a few more tests. But anyhow, I'm using 1500. You can probably use a thousand, then go 1500, then 2000, then 3000. I'm not doing that here. This is basically a piece of scrap metal and it worked. I'm using 1500 and 3000 on the Rupa six inch, um, I think it's called a Scorpio. Uh, it's a palm sander, unbelievable. So I'll show you how to go through those steps right now and I'll walk you through the whole thing. Again, it's a studio video, so we're gonna try to do it in one take and I'll show you the difference. Now the problem with this is because it sat outside, like I say in the main video, in the big channel video, it sat outside on the third level of a um, parking structure on the Upper East Side and right next to it, was the elevated train. Now people think subway, it's obviously sub under the ground, but in the Upper East Side, the train starts out uh, in 125th, it'll be uh, above, above the ground. So when it's above the ground, it's super high, it's about three floors up. This was sitting three floors up, exposed on this really valuable piece of property. It's a, uh, uh, you know, a mechanic shop. The cabs come in and they get fixed up and they go right back out, but they do it real fast. And this is where, uh, this is where accidents happen. But the top of the roof had all these cars sitting there. So first thing it did, you can see the, the whiteness here, that's just getting pounded for decades with sun, just, just basically giving it sunburn. And the second little thing is all these gazillions of little dots, I, I, not super common, I don't see that often. If anything, I see it like on one area, meaning like if there was a, you know, something that was spraying, like somebody sprayed their house over there or whatever, but the whole car, has been sitting next to a train for, like I said, 10, 12, 15 years, and it's a New York City train, so it's a lot of movement. All of that hot iron has burned through the paint, so normal polishing isn't gonna give you that perfect thing that you guys are looking for on the studio channel here. You wanna get that last little percentage, so I had to sand it down because, here's kind of the interesting part. People think sanding is can be more dangerous and the, and the truth is yes it can be if done improperly but what's fascinating is if you are wet sanding and using water you're actually decreasing the the temperature and if you watched one of the past episodes about burning the paint heat transfer is a very very big deal so what my point being when i am using uh sanding when i'm doing it wet sanding it, it's cold it's wet so you're not actually in, introducing a lot of heat i know that's i don't want to say counterintuitive but it's like Sometimes sanding is actually, the point being, sometimes sanding is less aggressive and, and less dangerous than introducing a lot of heat. Meaning if I have to go after this and get this out, I'm probably gonna have to use a lot of aggressive material, a heavy aggressive compound and heavy aggressive foam, which I wouldn't really use. I'm not a big fan of being aggressive with foam. I think it gets, it's just too weird. Or using wool and just grinding the heck out of it. You're gonna introduce a lot of heat and potentially burn the paint where sanding is actually quicker, even though it's scarier, and it's less, um, you're less likely to have heat damage. Does that hopefully make a whole lot of sense? Hope you guys are into studio channel stuff where I'll go through the whole process, but I'll do it right now. I'll show you uh, in this one take, and I'm gonna obviously do a 50-50 here. It's gonna come out great, because this side came out amazing. It's too bad we gotta get rid of this hood though, so let me get my stuff together. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see I am using the six inch Scorpio. I'll have, uh, you know, with air. I'm using, uh, forgive me, Rupes, but I just happened, it literally was the first one I grabbed, uh, the Meguiar's uh, P1500, just because it was close to my hand, and I'm using an interface, and again, it's a Meguiar's, right? So we're gonna take this, get this thing nice and squared up. 
obviously I'm in the middle of shooting the bigger episode, but I love chatting with the super, uh, the super nerds like me. Then I'll take my, my compressed air, plug it in, All right? Okay, take that off the paint. And then I have a little bit of water, just a little splash. And you can see the pad is relatively clean. When I'm done with it though, you're gonna see, it's leaking a little bit of air apparently. Um, you're gonna see that that's gonna be a little bit white. And then I'll go in and I'll clean the pad with water and th that's how I do it. I don't really use air unless it's a dry sanding. Okay, so here we go. This thing is super sensitive. The trigger for the air is on this side. Do you see where my thumb is? It's right there. And so this is off and this is fully on. You're gonna be somewhere a little bit less than, a little bit more than half, a little bit less than full. And it's pretty sensitive. So you want a little bit of rotation going on here. You see the slurriness? That's what you're looking for. That means you're cutting through all the junk. And what's interesting about this slurriness is it's a little yellow, which is that UV damage. Normally it's more white from the clear coat, but this is just so gross. It's easier for me to just sand it quickly than to go through with a, with a uh, polisher. Okay, so now when we're done, see the slurriness? Now that slurriness is usually a little bit more um, white, but it, it's hard probably to see on camera. This is very, um, this is very, can you see that? It's a little more yellow than I would consider it uh, white. And that's the, that's the UV coming off of it. So then you take a towel and you wipe it down, all right? Now you have 1500, yeah, you could totally see that now. Can you see that? Against the red, that is super yellowy, junky, gross. That is sunburn. That's super cool um, from my perspective. So let's take this off. You don't have to go super nuts here either. It's a little wet, it's fine. Then I'm going to take this pad off. It's hard to do this by yourself in film. Take this pad off and then I'm going to put this pad on. This is the P300. Again, pick your I have a ton of Rupes too. I just happened to grab this one, so it is what it is. So put this one on. Okay, now this one, I didn't clean off the last time. You see a little stuff there? So I'm gonna do this. I can't really do it on camera, but you get the gist. I'm gonna go ch -ch -ch and spray that down. Here we go. So I want my pad to be nice and clean. Quick squirts. There we go. Now we have 3000 grit. Come in here. Oh, that's way too fast. I bumped it. This little trigger is really sensitive, so if you're moving it around, like putting pads on, there's a chance that you're gonna bump that red thing. They put it so you can move it, your thumb, see my thumb right here? And move it on the fly, but you also bump it too. You see afterwards, see how it's a little bit more white. Why? Uh, because now we're really playing with the clear and less with the yellow that was all burned off. I, I got that off with the 3000 grit. Come back in with your towel. This, just scoop a bunch of that up. It might be a little bit wet, but the idea is just to get any of the grit off of there. Don't use the same towel that you're gonna use on the next one. So even though, so I'll show you, that's, that one's kind of gone. This one will be for my polishing. Now I have my wool pad. If you look at that wool pad closely, do you see how they're matte right there? It's all matted out right there. That's because I didn't blow it out yet, right? So you don't wanna start any polishing with something that looks like this. Your, your fibers aren't sticking up at that point. So there's nowhere to go in and slap around and slap around. Now they're flat. So you're just gonna like hydroplane over it, right? So I'm gonna take my air and I gotta disconnect it from the, uh, the Scorpio. I don't know if you can see on air, can you see over here? I'm gonna blow it out. Now 
Now this is the part that you'd want a, a mask on, but I can't have the mask on and talk to you. But you see how the fibers are sticking up right now? You see that? Then I'm gonna take polishing fluid, which is crazy because this is 3000 grit. It's pretty, it's pretty good that a polish can take that out with a dual action polisher in the, in the, in the days in the past, you'd be doing this with a, the rotary. So, you know what, I'm gonna take my mask off cause it's probably hitting the, can hitting the microphone. Sorry peoples. Normally you guys know I'd be wearing my mask, but I can't do, do, do that right now. Okay, so you put this on. I'm on about three-ish, a little bit more than three. Come in. Turn her on. And you're not gonna go like wild. I, I'm gonna cut this into at least two different blowout sessions. Put this on the table, put my blow out. Okay, take this one, wipe it off. Okay, that is as show car as you can get in a few minutes. And so it's totally possible to do that at home if you have the right tools, etc. cetera. Um, it just, basically what you're doing is polishing the paint three or four times metaphorically speaking, meaning you're spending that much time three or four times. You're gonna do the, the 1500 or whatever it is, 2000, 1000, whatever, once, and then the second one twice to set it up um, for the, the wool pad. So it's basically three steps. The first sanding, the second sanding, and then the wool pad sanding. Let me grab the camera and show you the, dif the difference. That's what happens when you step on compressed air, apparently. Okay, I'm behind the camera. Let's get the ISO right. So this is after the 1500 and the 3000, you can see. Original, just messy original, let's just slop. Original, after 1500 and 3000, even look at the circles there. See, they're, they're less, um, right, right here, they're kind of bouncing all over the place, right? Here they are as well, but it's uniform. See, it's very uniform, I guess is the right word. And then this is after, I mean, this is, again, this is junk paint and look what we could do. So the reason I shot this video is, especially for the studio folks, look what you can do. Like you can do it. I, ju I just showed you how to do it. It's not that super complicated and th there's a decent amount of paint, but there's not a ton of paint on this. There's probably six mil. So it's, it's very average, normal paint. And this is what I did over here. And I'm gonna try to do my best because I don't wanna spend all day doing this because he might repaint it or whatever he's gonna do. But I wanna at least present this in a way that is respectful to the car and the gentleman uh, is gonna, who happens to be a Marine is picking this up and he's gonna work on it with his kid. So it's good, man. This is gonna be super fun to, to give this to, uh, to somebody and, and to go and, and, and play with it. But you can see there's, he's gonna have some work. There's just rust here and things, but interior is actually pretty, Pretty badass if you look at it. Oh, the door's locked, I gotta get the key, but it's really clean on the inside now that we just finished everything up. And the wheels are sick, look at those. The wheels are probably the most valuable part of the car. And the hubcaps, which are over there, uh, look really good. Anyhow, if you guys have any questions uh, from a studio perspective, uh, shoot me an email or, or just reach out. But yeah, you can, you can definitely uh, sand the paint and have it look great. And I think the takeaway from this is a wool pad a wool foam pad, and this is a special one I've been working on, straight cut, super cool, um, with my special wool. And with one, that's polished, that's not, that's not a compound, that's a polish. You're able to get this result, that's insane. You'd only be able to do that with like 50 steps years ago with a rotary, but anyhow, hope this is uh, helpful behind the scene, guys. Talk to you soon, and thanks for supporting and, and watching all the big channel and this channel as well. I'll talk to you, bye.